So, hello everybody and welcome to a new part in the Thylacine Blender tutorial series. Um, so it's been quite a long time since the last part, but I hope um, the series is still useful to you in some way. And basically I'll just continue where I left off like about a year or so ago. And as you can see it's the very same state. The only thing that has changed is um, now I'm using the latest version of Blender which is at the moment um, 2.77 and last time I used uh, 2.49b. Now we don't have to use um, the old version anymore because we have uh, scripts, uh, BFB scripts and some woodworking NIF scripts um, to export and import files for Zoo Tycoon. Um, so now we can use the new blender which brings um, many many benefits over the old one really in in lots of areas um, so you should switch to the uh, new one as well we'll get to some of these benefits later so um, what do we have to do to migrate our file so the first thing thing we need to do is we have to save it with a new blender so we suffix it with 277 and we close this file or we simply open a new blend file, a blank scene and then we will append into this blend file so we get a clean user interface in the last file it was messed up a little so we select this blend file that we've just saved and we go to object and cube, this is the thylacine model and it also will bring us um, the armature okay so here we have the model and the armature and we even have one animation so now we can split the area and now we go to the action editor which is hidden here in the dope sheet editor so now we have the action editor and we see we have the swim uh, right action but all the others are missing so we have to append these as well so move up to action and select all and deselect with uh, shift this one and the one that we already have which is the swim right 40. Okay, and a pen from library. Now all of these are here, um, but they they show this uh, zero in front of the name. And if you know Blender, you know that means that um, they will be deleted when you save and reload the Blend file. So we have to make them um, fake user like this by clicking the F uh, then they will be given a user even though they are not really used and this will keep Blender from uh, deleting them when loading the Blend file so um, we could do that manually of course mm, but it's time consuming so I wrote a tiny little script which is have to go to the text editor and then um, create a new text file and I can just type it uh, because I know it by heart uh, so we'll first import BPI this gives us access to the blend file and then we uh, create a for loop for action in BPI data um, actions um, and then we have to set the fake user attribute for each action oh no I don't remember how the attribute is called use fake user is true 
And now we can test if it works with Alt P. And I think it worked because otherwise we would have gotten an error. Now we can check if it really worked. Yes, all the actions have uh, the fake user. So now they're safe and won't be deleted again when we uh, reload the blend file. So now we can um, save this file as yeah, this will be thylacine number 10 and it's the sixth uh, blend file that um, yeah, goes about enemies. So we name it thylacine 10 anim 6. All right. Now um, I got to turn on the um, the key stuff, which um, I activate with uh, Shift Alt C. Yeah, and now we have this nice um, yeah button display. Okay, great. So now we go to pose mode. And we don't need the toolbar really. So now we could continue with several things, but I decided it would be best to reevaluate um, the animations a bit. And I sat down last night and had a look at this walk cycle. And if I play it back now, I feel it is really stiff and quite ugly. So um, what I did was I pretty much remade that from scratch and the new version I made looks like this. So I think it looks a lot smoother now and also more natural. This is uh, still quite rough so the spine and the head don't really move uh, perfectly so it should also shift from left to right a little bit more. But um, that would be easy enough to sort it out really. Um, I was mainly concerned with um, the, the general pose and uh, position and timings especially of the legs. So the leg movement was uh, quite off on the other one for comparison again. You see it, it, it really looks quite stiff and also um, the legs are doing the same stuff very um, uniformically. If you compare here it's a lot more, well, organic, I could say, natural. All right, so how did I create this one? So I'll deconstruct it now and basically remake it again for you to see um, how it should be done. So we'll close this one and we start from scratch. So um, the last time, or when I created this walk cycle, I didn't really have any reference, sort of, so I, I just, yeah, well, basically made it up out of thin air, more or less, and this is why it looks, uh, well, boring and also very regular. So now um, I've talked to some uh, thylacine experts and um, found this chart which was um, created by Professor Möller who worked at my university um, in Heidelberg um, and it shows the gate of the thylacine. Oh, I have to open that in Jim so I can scroll it mm. and basically it shows us, uh, it's really useful, it shows us first the different phases here 
So we have the whole cycle in um, eight different um, screen shots or frames, if you like. And then also really useful, we have um, the these black stripes denote the times when a foot or hand, so a limb, is uh, resting on the ground. So we have here this uh, this cycle. In, um, in timing. So the timing here is um, nicely laid out and we can adapt that uh, to, our, to our action. So here it says um, RP, RM, LM and LP and I'm pretty sure that stands for right pace um, meaning right foot in Latin and right manus and so on. So manus is the hand so um, we can easily adapt that to our keys. So it starts with um, right foot, right foot, then right hand here, then left hand. Okay, we move that one up, and then we are in the same phase. Okay, so now what we do is basically we remove everything no we don't remove every everything we only remove all the leg movement so we remove all the keys for the leg controller bones so it just slides forward. Okay, now one thing we should change is here. Where is it? Uh, BIP01 should go to the top so we can see it easily. And we have to change the interpolation so it doesn't, it sort of wobbles about which is not really what we like. I think BIP01 moves properly, so we can ignore that for now. Okay, so the first thing we have to do, I switch the view to uh, right view, so we don't have to mirror this reference. First uh, thing we should do is sort of get the first frame here in Professor Muller's uh, chart. So we sort of just try to try to reproduce the pose. So left hand is a bit curled. Right hand is pretty much at the same place where it is now. Um, but the overall pose is also different because um, the the spine points down a bit and the neck is uh, raised fairly high oh, like maybe like this yeah I think that would work maybe the right hand move a bit backward okay now we're good to go Oh, I forgot to turn on um, automatic keyframing. So now I turned it on again. Um, and so I can save this pose here. I just copy it to the buffer and then move to the start frame. Now it reverted again because I hadn't set it yet, but I can pass it from the buffer and then it should set yes. Okay. So now we have the first frame and we also passed it over the last frame and of course we have to move it forward and I do so now by uh, 0.6 blender units. Um, so this is perhaps the most difficult thing but you have to sort of figure that out by just trying which looks best. But there's a sort of a way 
that often works which is you go to the middle of your loop of your cycle and you pass um, the mirror pose so the start pose is this one you copy it and then you go to um, to the middle and you pass it mirrored and you move it forward until you have you take the foot that that's um, in front of the other foot and then you, you just mark the beginning of that one with, um, with your 3D cursor then you move to the middle t um, of your walk cycle and drag the complete thing forward um, so this the back foot stays in place and this now we can check how much it was this was by 2.28 um, uh, blender units so point uh, 3 is a good choice because we we can just um, we don't have to do any maths to to get to the values. Um, so here we pass it again and then move it forward by point three, which is how I got to um, point six. Point um, point eight in total uh, was a bit too fast for for the legs because you also have to account for the the shorter limbs here because the arms are a lot shorter than the back legs so um, these are the limiting factor here so now just let me just check if that one's all correct no it's not or is it oh yeah it seems to seems to be fine yeah it's fine all right so we can turn off the properties again okay so now we have this rough skeleton of our walk cycle so what we need next are the intermediate poses so now we see here we have we have those eight different frames which means if we add the last frame back in we we are at nine frames uh, so we have to find a time that it works uh, better for that because here we can't uh, get these um, frames sorted like with um, evil even distribution uh, so we, we we um, resize the walk cycle to be 30 frames long and then we also move it to the left by one frame so the first frame sits at frame zero this was something um, that I changed in the um, in the in the um, exporting scripts uh, scripts because um, the blender people also change the first frame to be frame zero and in the old blender uh, the first frame was frame one for some reason okay so now we can yeah now we need so frame one or phase one is this frame then we have here phrase two oh wait we have frame one two three four and five so we need uh, three intermediate frames here so we add this one here this is the passing pose for the back leg so we take the right back leg move it up a little and curl it and we go to frame number four which is 
phase two. And now when we look at these um, at this gate cycle, um, we see that the leg is or the limb is on the ground for about well definitely more than half of the time like about 60% or so so I'd say two-thirds it's on the ground more or less um, so not not half like we we have it currently but um, we can easily make it seem like it is on the ground longer than we and then our keys make make it seem by simply taking I use the 3D cursor again to mark the position the original position and I simply if we check here this is basically the the foot is being lifted in phase two so I just make it look like it's only lifted but not really yet off the ground and then here comes the passing pose and here's the next pose uh, phase phase uh, four and we do the same trick here we we note the pose again and then we bring it forward here just to the place where it starts to touch the ground and then we have the right cycle because then the leg only seems to really move a lot for these um, yeah well mm, about 12 frames instead of uh, 15 oh see here we've got a problem um, we've got to move that by one more frame and here as well use K to select the column and bring it out by one frame and then they're evenly spaced okay so now we have the first leg cycle done now we can simply copy these keys and paste them mirrored onto onto the other leg and of course we have to move it forward by 0.3 units and this is why I use um, why I use complete numbers without um, commas or points so no floating point numbers really just moving by uh, by full grid units then I paste the next one now that was the wrong one. First I have to select the right leg controller, then copy, then paste. Oh, it was the right one. And then move forward by 0.3 units and select again. And paste. Oops. And move forward. And now the back legs well, sort of move fine. Could be a little bit fine tuned, really, but that's mostly cosmetics now. So maybe I remove this key again so I get the middle position and I bring it up a little more. Now I take this one again and pass it over here. Mirror move forward. It's the same game really, all the time. You just refine it until it looks plausible. Here's something wrong, I think, because it looks fairly abrupt. I think I'll move that one a bit more forward. No, I have to move it backward a little. So it looks plausible. So you really have to go slowly, frame by frame. 
until it looks plausible. So let's look at the reference again. It's not really raised a lot and it's not really curled a lot, it's really just above the top of the paw, so it's not very high, not raised a lot. Okay, so we mirror that again, bring it forward, and we mirror this one, and bring it forward. Okay, now we have the back legs fairly well. Oh, here. Ah, now I see the problem. These are off by one frame, which is what made them look strange. And now they're in phase. Okay, so now we need the front legs, of course. So go back to this view. And now we have to check um, when these rest on the ground. So we have right foot, okay, so the right hand rests um, in the middle, uh, rests from um, the start and the end and is only active in the middle and of course the other hand rests from here to here okay now we got that but hey something really looks off about the timing it seems to slow down and then speed up again I think we have to make sure these keyframes interpolate mm, let's use Bezier's um, Bezier curves curves are um, um, with smooth interpolation and we also have to set um, the extrapolation mode to make cyclic um, with an F-curve modifier. Hmm. Still looks a little strange, but we'll see if it gets better when we add more keys. No, here. Here's a problem. Um, these all keys for BIP01 should have um, linear interpolation so it doesn't slow up as slow down or speed up. Okay, now that looks a whole lot better already. We can hide those keys again. So, what we gotta do now is refine are the keys for the arms. So let's take the right arm first. So here it rests, it rests, it rests, it rests, and then in phase four it is lifted. So we go to phase four. First again we we mark the position in phase uh, three. And we go to phase four and we basically use the same trick to make it seem like it stayed in place. So basically with this method we slow the movement down here and we speed it up in the middle. Okay, then we have this one. We already had that before. And then we need phase number six. Same trick. We mark this, and then we sort of try to make it fit. Oh, okay, so now this looks a little ugly here. 
so we should probably move um, the leg backwards a little so maybe like this maybe not by complete um, unit but sort of like this so we copy this one again and we pass it here move it forward by 0.6 and we passed it um, we passed it here move it forward by 0.3 and we copy this one and now we should have avoided uh, this very strong stretching of the forelimb and reduce it here a bit too so let me check and play back oops something's wrong here so we try the whole game again so we copy this one and I just take the other one along. I passed it and move it forward by 0.3. And I passed it again, move it forward by 0.6. So this one should go here and here. And we have this one here. We should get rid of those keys again. And we should get rid of these keys again too and recreate them all from the new pose because otherwise we get these weird speed issues again okay so same story as always you know the trick by now I assume You know the game. Mark it. Uh -huh. And this looks a bit ugly, but we might fix it later by adding maybe one more bone because this here is really just the toes while the hand should go up until here so we might need to add a second bone i'm not quite sure i'll check that out later but for now we will just focus on the action so we go here copy and paste and move forward and we go here copy and paste and move backward and now we're pretty much at the same state as uh, the animation I showed you before, the one I made uh, last night. So we have the leg movement in a fairly plausible way. Oh, there's something wrong here. Possibly. Maybe, maybe not. I think the problem might be due to the extrapolation we're using. But it's it looks alright more or less. It's just a visual issue, I think. Nothing to worry about. Mm, so how do we continue? We mm, we need some movement of the pelvis bone so we know that when um, when a leg or when a limb goes into the passing pose here so when it passes the other leg um, the pelvis or the shoulder is raised and on the opposite here when the limb, in this case the arms, 
are um, in the stretch pose, so when they're spread apart, um, this part of the body is lowered. Maybe like this. Can also bring up the neck a bit because the neck tends to uh, keep the head in position. So it's um, the animal can can see better. So um, it just remains in place more or less. So um, when we take this, take all these keys, copy, and mirror them here, we get a slight spine wobbling effect. Only this one. Okay, now there's a bit more. Um, the spine is not only lowered, but it's often also rotated a little. So I don't think we have any rotation keyframes here yet. Oh, yes, we do. I think then we can just keep it like that. Because the more randomization we introduce here, oh no, it's actually it's rotated on a different axis. It's rotated here from top view, so we can rotate it from front view just a little here, which the animal would basically do to realign um, the center of gravity onto the legs that are at, on ground at this very moment. So we copy the key again and we paste it. Okay. So now we can also just to double check we also have um, the different phases here in in this diagram which shows uh, which limb is on the ground at this very given time so we can check phase one are uh, these three which is correct the next phase only two which matches up again and phrase uh, phase three we have uh, three limbs on the ground again these then we have only two limbs on the ground, which matches again. We have phase 5, which is the mirror of phase 1. So we have these three on the ground. And then we have phase 6, two on the ground. Phase 7. We have well, three on the ground again. In phase eight, we have two on the ground, these two, and then it, and the cycle is over and starts again. Okay, so now we can refine it a bit more. Um, so I mentioned the center of gravity um, a bit, so we can go to the top view and with this information we have here we can sort of try to figure out how the the body mass would be shifted in order to uh, for the animal not to tumble over so that the center of gravity is always um, above the legs that are on, on the ground at this very moment so here in the first frame we have this triangle. So here we would be in the center, but in the front we would move a little towards the left. But we make the head point forward. So we copy this pose, past it mirrored here. 
Move forward by three. Past it again. Yeah. Then we do that for frame or for phase two. We have these two. So here the pelvis bone, where is it? Here would move to the right or to the left of the animal a little and yeah maybe go a little more to the left mm -hmm. so here we have Phase two, so we copy these keys here uh, for phase uh, three. Copy them and paste them here. Mirror again, and we have one more where we can adjust the center of gravity, which is phase four. No. So we have it here. Wait. I didn't do it on phase three, I think. Yeah, I missed it here. So here we move a little to the right. And so the pelvis goes a little to the right, but the the our whole body moves to the center again, sort of like this. Okay, but we have to be a bit careful with uh, this effect here because if we give it too much uh, spine wiggling, it will look sort of reptilian, so we, we don't have to overdo it here. And the last two, here it's all on this side, so we just move it to the left a little. So now you see we have this wiggly appearance, so we should reduce it a bit again. That was way too much. So maybe we can, I'm not sure if that's possible, maybe we can smooth out the curves we'll just go into graph editor and see what we can do mm, that's ugly so we just take this one no I don't want to see all of these curves, I just want this one, and I'll just silence them all so I can only see. No, mm. no, no, no. I have to turn off um, the visibility, not. Yep. not their, um, their influence. So what can we do here? Yeah, so we'll even that out. We'll bring this one down. And we'll bring this one down. And then we have a, a lot smoother movement. Now this one it looks fine already. And this one as well. So now we can take the complete keyframe again. Uh, now we'll check these out as well. But they don't it looks like they aren't um huge well discontinuities sort of breaks 
it just looks quite smooth so we can take it and be happy for now mm. so we paste those keys again and I think the pelvis itself is probably still exaggerated but at least it moves smoothly maybe there's a smooth tool I don't really know because I haven't used it a lot but there might be a modifier so we'll just see if we can do that <laughs> because key um, channels now support modifiers yes add modifier no noise nope now well we'll do it manually Rem only so the ones that are of interest now and move nope here move this one down move this one down and move this one down and not really well the location should definitely be smooth enough but we should also check out the rotation a bit more in detail okay one of these is yep So we're here to frame 16. So these can't really be edited in a straightforward way, which is not so nice for us. Um, but it, I think it's smooth enough now. So now we can try to get this one smoother. No, we should turn on the keys again otherwise we might get confused later on okay now we can we use the 3d cursor again so I think the height offset probably works I gotta check these which one which keys change yeah, so this is Y and Z and I move it up um Y and Z okay okay so we could move it upward here a little more give it a little bit more nope that was too much it, it all already has this sort of hopping look okay then, then we go here so we try to make it smooth but also not too smooth so it doesn't you know become hardly noticeable at all okay yeah now it goes up and down up and down up and down 
okay so it's really just a tiny bit I think the side view looks really good now so now it's time to check out and fix the top view so what we're gonna do is take this one and pin it straight to the middle just for every keyframe that we have here as well because these inconsistencies uh, can really look ugly Ooh. so we paste it again and then we can preview it finally I think then it should be fairly good yeah I like that it's even better than the last one I think in the test I made yeah that looks really smooth the only thing, the only issue that might remain now um, could be the head. And we can also do a bit, bit of movement on the tail. So I'll turn on individual origins here. And now we have to uh, think about how the tail would move. So here the pelvis is up, then the tail would be down. <coughs> Sorry. Um, then the tail would go up when it raises the pelvis. Mm. It's always difficult to figure out a bit nope that was wrong yes that could work so a little bit of an upwards curl make it more interesting yeah I think that works do we have side wood curl yes we do check how it looks yeah that looks fine now on to the head and then we should be more or less done we could give it the same sort of rotation but much slighter so we have to think about um, about delay of the motion so when it when it's pushed up here it would drag the snout a little down because here it would move a little bit upward the neck would go a tiny bit upwards but the head would still face down a little so we take this one and paste it here mirror of course and then we have to check out the front view for the head so we make sure it faces upwards or not upwards and that it doesn't face sideways uh -huh. Uh -huh. almost there ok now there's just one last tiny thing we should animate the lung bones again to make it a little 
more lively, lifelike. Yep, it's breathing again. Okay, so now we we've got a really really good bulk cycle, which looks very plausible, and this um, is accurate as accurate as we can uh, tell from from the surviving video material and of course this chart which was in turn, uh, in turn derived from uh, the video material. Okay, uh, we can play it back a few times. Look at it from all angles. But I'm really happy with with the result. So now of course we have to um, change all of the uh, transition animations from um, like from stand to walk and walk to stand and walk to swim and all that stuff. But I think um, the it's worth uh, the effort because the new walk cycle is a lot better. Alright, so that would be it for today. Um, I hope it was helpful to you in a way and showed you some useful tips for getting better results for your animations, especially of course walk cycles, which are pretty much the trickiest part of animating really. So try to get a sort of a one of these diagrams if you can because they're really helpful and if not um, try to find video material of your animal and then find the different faces and sort these out yourself yeah so see you next time <laughs>